You are watching Life on Gabriela TV, community television for you, by you. Pretty berry. Spend time intergenerationally is a huge one. Um, you know, play with kids uh, and and hang out with older people. I would definitely tell my younger self to get out of the city way quicker um, instead of just dreaming about it um, because it truly is where my joy lives. You can have nature in the city, of course, but I want to be immersed in it and um, I want to grow things. I want to live under those grown things. I want to eat those grown things. Um, yeah, I would just get, get out of the city sooner because that just is who I am at heart. So. Uh, I don't think, I don't think a younger me is going to want to listen to my advice anyway. Um, and I just don't think giving advice is the way to, to influence something. It's, it's really more about what you do rather than what you say. I, I feel like yeah. I should just tell my younger self, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, you're probably right. Which is funny because we don't feel like that when we're young. We feel like we're floundering around and we're making mistakes and like weird things happen to us. And we don't see the path at all that we're on. And so I guess that is what I would tell my younger self is it's okay. It's going to work out somehow. Just keep doing this thing that you are doing. Keep being who you are, even though it doesn't always make sense to yourself or other people around you. 20 years ago, I had a cancer that mostly white males got in their 60s, 70s, or 80s, and I was 30 at the time. And um, so I had to make a big choice that if I wanted to live, I had to have a transplant. And if I had that transplant, I had to have chemo. If I had to have chemo, I was never gonna be able to have children. So I had to either choose, do I wanna live, or do I want to try and do whatever I could to, to have kids? And like, so I chose to take the chemo and do the transplant. And I actually, um, did that while I was here. When I first moved here, I had the transplant. And um, if I were to look back on it then, it was a, just a horrendous decision for me to have to make. But today I met somebody here on the island who had three kids and they just complete me. So if I had to talk to myself then, I would have said, just don't stress. There's gotta be something for you down the road. And, and down the road for me was some three kids that I would have never met had I never moved to Gabriola. It's a beautiful world if you look at it and you listen to it. <coughs> Even the tree will talk to you, the birds. You are watching Life on Gabriela TV, community television, for you, by you. My name is Brian Green. I am uh, a, I've been at Gabriela about four years now, just over four years. Um, I continue to work in Vancouver. Uh, I'm a sociologist by training. I uh, work as a union rep for university professors. I, aside from that, I uh, I make music. Uh, I I organize uh, community events and uh, and small uh, small gatherings on on a regular basis to find different ways of bringing people together. And I do that with uh, with Megan, uh, my partner. We spend a lot of time on. Uh, issues of food security and comfort and uh, and ways to that communities can celebrate one another so that they want to spend more time together and invest locally uh, in in building their relationships uh, yeah to live in to live in the world that we live in rather than uh, in in something that we imagine 
might be over. Uh, my name is Megan Adam. I live on Gabriola Island and I do a lot of things. Uh, for my job life, I do web development. I'm a web developer, project manager, but I do a lot of things that aren't related to getting, making money. So in my life, I am, oh, how would I encapsulate that? I do a lot of sewing. I sew all my own clothes. I'm a weaver. Uh, I'm uh, somebody who facilitates med meditation, teaches meditation, uh, practice Zen Buddhism. I am a gardener. I am a food producer. I am a community organizer. I'm a musician. I think that might... Oh, a writer. I'm also a writer. I write a newsletter. There were so many reasons that we picked Gabriola when we decided to leave the city. And some of them were logistic, and some of them were financial, and some of them were this, 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 this. But one of the things that I remember, I didn't know anything about Gabriola. I'd never set foot on this island. Um, but when we, when it first came up, as maybe this is the right kind of place, you know, I did some, uh, just, you know, did some quick Google searching and just kind of see what I can read about. And... Uh, what I remember is I read about uh, I read about the Gertie, and I read about the medical center, and I read about the commons. Yeah, those three things. I mean, we both came out of uh, out of politically active and community uh, community engaged places. So when we when we looked at those, there were all of these other reasons why Gabriella was a place that could work for us, uh, you know, logistically and so on and so forth. But the key thing was we, we kind of hit on that and said, wow, this is a community that gets things done. Gabriola is a human-sized community. And that's different than when you live in the city or even in other communities that are really sprawled out. Like you can live in very rural communities that don't feel human-sized. This is a community that's rural, but also people aren't that far apart from each other. So there's a real sense of being together in a place. And an island, even more so, because you're bounded by water. So. There's something about Gabriel that feels very human and that when you do something, it could be a small thing, just to hold a canning workshop, a very small offering. You can see how it impacts and ripples out. The first thing for us was like start having house concerts, which happened accidentally. Somebody asked us, you know, can musicians come and sing in your yard? Sure. Right? Well, okay. Th that's a little thing. You know, it's a tiny little thing, but my God, that was so profoundly important in terms of grounding us in this community. Coming here is not like, okay, now we don't have to deal with the problems of the world anymore. Coming here is like, now I have a little bit of space to look at the world and how I want to be in it, as opposed to always being pushed around in it, which is how we are when we're so crowded and working so much and, you know, financially insecure, those things. The question of well, intergenerational diversity, but also just diversity of, uh, of experience and so on and so forth and uh, reaching out to people who, who are different than you in terms of how they live and how they think. Um, you, see that, you see that much more profoundly more quickly in a place like this um, because as soon as you do something, it is, everybody's there. Yeah, refuge is about shelter and that doesn't have to be a permanent, that's not a permanent or fixed thing because we take refuge in people. We take refuge in ideas. We take refuge in books. We take refuge in music, you know. Um, there are all these places where we find ourselves sheltered in the world. And so uh, my home is one kind of refuge for me and hopefully for the people who spend time here and come in retreat here. Uh, but it's much bigger than that. Refuge is about... It is about finding a place where we fit. That's refuge is about finding a place where we fit.